And because they made that choice, they were blessed. Serving the Lord is a personal choice. You can never serve God for somebody. I cannot serve God for you. You cannot serve God for me. But if you want God to bless you, you must do like what Joshua and Caleb did. And not like sons of Eli, which are going to see later on in 1 Samuel. A delegation from the tribe of Judah led by Caleb. Joshua chapter 14, verses 6 to 14. A delegation from the tribe of Judah led by Caleb, sons of Jephunneh, the Kesenite, came to Joshua at Giga. Caleb said to Joshua, Remember what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, about you and me, when we were at Kadesh Barnet. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnet to explore the land of the Canaan. I returned and gave an honest report. Underline it. Honest report is very, very important if you want to be successful. In anything you do, you want honest report. People deceive themselves, they think they are deceiving others. But later on, they blame everybody, but they don't blame themselves. I returned and gave an honest report. But my brothers who went with me frightened the people from entering the promised land. For my part, I wholeheartedly followed the law, my God, so that, so that the Moses solemnly promised me, the land of Canaan on which you were just walking will be your grand land and out of your descendant forever because... You wholeheartedly follow the Lord God. You, fo you wholeheartedly follow the Lord my God. Now, as you can see, the Lord has kept me alive and well as He promised for these 45 years. Since Moses made this promise, even while Israel wandered in the wilderness, today I am 85 years old. I am as strong as I was when Moses sent me on that journey. And I can still travel and fight as well as I could then. So give me. The hill country that the Lord promised me. You remember that this cast, we found the descendants of Anarchy living in that great world. But if the Lord is with me, I will drive them out of the land, as the Lord said. So Joshua promised, so Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and gave him Hebron to him as portion of the land. Hebron belonged to the son of Caleb, Jephunneh the Kesena, because he wholeheartedly followed the Lord. The God of Israel. So if you want God to bless you, the first thing you must learn to do is to wholeheartedly follow God. As I say always, and I will repeat it again, a lot of people come to church, they are not they are not following God wholeheartedly, but they expect God to bless them. But one of the things you must know that they never receive blessing. If you want God to bless you, you must follow God wholeheartedly. Don't serve God partially. You must read your Bible consistently. You must pray consistently. You know, the children of Israel, they actually pray every 33 or 4 hours. They pray 6 o'clock in the morning, 9 o'clock, 12, 3, and 6 p.m. But because of our job, we may not have that time. But you can still do it. You don't have to leave your job to pray. I can lie down my bed and pray. I can be doing some other thing and I'm praying. If you want God to bless you, one of the things you must learn to do is to follow the law with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your mind. So, you can now see 45 years later, two men who give honest report. They are the only one who are alive out of the 12 that went to spy the land. As I always say, the country does not bless anybody. The job you do does not bless you. What well, bless somebody is following the God, Lord God of Israel, with all of your heart, all of your strength. And if you also want God to bless you when you walk, you must put God first. But people say, oh, no, I'm not going to give my money to nobody. When you look at their life, they're never blessed. Because if I want to know what you believe in, I want to look at your budget. I want to look at uh, your checkbooks. I want to see how you spend your money. What what is the thing that interests you the most? Is it party? Is it nightclub? Is it going for wakekeeping, graduation, marriage ceremony? It will reflect on your budget. Is it the love you have for God? It also reflects on your budget and your time. How much time do you spend for God? But Joshua and Caleb, they wholeheartedly follow God. 45 years later, these two men are great men in Israel now. 
Joshua is now the president of the nation Israel, and Caleb is an elder state man, but he's still very strong. He has a lot of energy. His eyes is not dim, and his, his energy did not abate. He went to his associate, who is now the president, he said, Joshua, you remember you and I, we are the only two people who give honest report. Honest report is that you say what God says. God says, I am well. You may be sick in your body like Job. He said, though he slay me, yet I will, I, be, I, will, I will trust him. Tell your body, I am well. You may, you may be poor. You say, I am rich. Begin to say to yourself every day, I am rich. 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 You know what's going to happen? One day, you are going to become rich. So Joshua and Caleb gave honest report. Other ten brethren, they gave false report. Oh, we cannot go to the land. Even though, even though God said they can enter the land. So believing God according to his word is the key to success. You want God to bless you this year, 2018? You must learn to believe the word of God as God has said. Don't let the devil deceive you by telling you, Oh, you cannot do God's work. Oh, you are too busy. You don't have time for Bible study. You don't have time for prayer. You don't have time for anything. That is the strategy of the devil. You know, today we are talking of Islamization of certain country around the world. I watch this Muslim. They are very faithful to prayer. When it's time to pray, even when, when, we were in, when I was in the college, on the exam day, when it's time for prayer, they would drop their paper, they go and pray. Because the university know that's their religion. They honor them. They respect them. Does your employer know you are a Christian? Does your fellow student know you are a Christian? Does your fellow worker know you are a Christian? If you are, what, inf what impression are you giving? Did they see you reading your Bible? Did they see you praying? Somebody will say, you know, during lunchtime, I always see this guy bend down and put his face on the table. What is he doing? He's always praying or he's always reading his Bible. Or they always see you, you're just talking, moving from place to place. You never have time to meditate, to think of the essence of who made you. That is the key to success. I send us the prayer the other time and say, we should pray. Because every time the church has challenges, one thing I have come to discover in the Bible is prayer. When they pray, God always answer. The church have had so many challenges. If you look at the church history, the church of Jesus Christ was growing in Jerusalem. The Herod was very angry. He wanted to vest the church of Christ. He put his hand there, tried to destroy the church. And the church said, God, see how this man is threatening us. We want you to please fight for us. And Herod was giving a speech. And they were clapping hands saying, this is the voice of God, not the voice of man. One of the angels said, what? I didn't know this man is a God. If he's a God, let us test him. The one of the angels smote him. The worm ate him up. And the church had peace. There are other people who think they are very powerful. They go into perpetual sleep. Meaning, God allowed them to sleep and sleep and sleep. So that the church of God can have peace. So prayer is very, very important. So if anybody is troubling you, any condition is troubling you, learn to put it into God's hand. Prayer is very, very important. Although today, the younger generation, they don't believe in prayer. They think, oh, I can do it by my power. I can do it with my own strength. That is the devil's strategy. We need the Lord. We need God and we need him now. In our lives, in our home, in our academies, in our business. So when you commit everything to God's hand, you are going to be blessed. Let us go to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 1. We are going to read chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3, and chapter 4. We are going to be, we are going to be flying at a high altitude. We are, going to be, we, are going to be, we are going to be running fast. So quickly turn to your Bible. Open your Bible quick. Open your Bible. Open your Bible. Open your Bible to... 1 Samuel chapter 1. Open your Bible to Joshua chapter 1. There was a man named Herkana who lived in Ramah, in the region of Zephon, the hill country of Ephraim. He was the son of Jeroboam, son of Elihu, son of Tohu, 
son of Zufo, son of Ephraim. Elkanah had two wives, Hannah and Penihan. Penihan had children, but Hannah did not. Each year, Hannah would travel to Ceylon to worship and sacrifice the Lord God of Heaven's army at the tabernacle. The priests of the Lord at that time were the sons of Eli, Honifah, and Phinehah. On that day, Herkana presented his sacrifice. He would give portion of the meat to Pena and each of her children. And though he had loved Hannah, he would give her only one choice portion because the Lord has given her no children. So Penningham will taunt Hannah and make fun of her because the Lord had kept her from having children. Year after year, it was the same time Penningham would taunt Hannah as they went to the tabernacle. Each time, Hannah would be reduced to tear. I will not even eat. Why are you crying, Hannah? A Kana would ask. Why wouldn't you? Why are you eating? Why are you downhearted just because you have no children? You have me. Isn't that better than having ten sons? <laughs> you know, sometimes men are very funny. <laughs> the woman is crying. You're already there. The man knows you are there. So why are you telling the woman, oh, I'm better than ten sons? The woman doesn't want to hear that. So the story here is, here is this man with two wives. One of them is having children. The other one doesn't have children. You know, when you don't achieve your goal, when you don't achieve your success, do you feel downcasted? When you take a class, you don't pass it, or you don't get a promotion at work, or you don't have a job, or you cannot buy what you want to buy, or you cannot achieve your dream, do you feel downcasted? Do you feel less than who you are? And if you feel that, what do you do? We are going to see what Hannah did. You know, when you don't have your blessing, most people, what they do, they run away from God. They say, oh, no, no, I don't need God now. I don't need church. I don't need religion. They run away from God. And that's a big, big mistake. If you want God to bless you, if you have problem, run to God. Don't run away from him. If you run to God, the God of Israel will bless you. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. When you read Malachi, the last verse before Matthew, he said, I, the Lord, does not change. I remain the same. As I was yesterday, so I am today. That's why the children of Israel are not consumed. God has not changed. Any person that follows the principle that is written in the Bible, it doesn't matter who you are. Even if you are not a Christian, if you follow the principle, it's going to work. It doesn't matter whether you're a Christian or unbeliever. If you put seed on the ground, you water it. You put water. It's going to it's going to germinate. But if you now say, oh, I'm a Christian. I'm not going to plant my fruit. I'm not going to put nothing on the ground. You're not going to get any benefit. That's why when you read the Bible, you have to be very careful what you do. Verse 9 of chapter 1. After a sacrificial meal at Shilon, Hannah got up and went to pray. This is the key to success. Hannah the Eli the priest was sitting at his customary place because beside the entrance of the tabernacle, Hannah was in deep anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. And she made this vow, O Lord of heaven's army, if you will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be here. He will be yours for the entire of his life. And as a sign that he had been dedicated to the Lord, his hair will never be caught. As he was praying the Lord, as he was praying to the Lord, Eli watched her, seeing her lips moving, but sharing no sound. She thought she had been drinking. Must you come here drunk? She, he demanded, throw away your wine. Oh, no, sir. She replied, I have never been drinking wine or any strong drink. Uh, any, any, I have not been drinking anyone any stronger. But I am very discouraged. I am pouring out my heart to the Lord. Don't think I am a wicked woman. For I have been praying out of great anguish and sorrow. In that case, 
Eli said, Go in peace. May the, may the God of Israel grant the request you have asked of him. Oh, thank you, sir, she exclaimed. Then she went home and began to eat again, and she was no more, she was no longer sad. You see now, when people have problems, you know what they do? They run away from God. Hannah knew the secret to her problem was to pray. What did she do? She made a vow. I thought when I was a pastor in the church, I tell people, I say, you want God to bless you? Don't come to church every year, year by year, and you remain the same. You are not going to get the blessing. If you have tried to study this exam, you are studying and studying and studying and taking and you're not passing, make a vow. Say, God, guess what? If I pass this my exam, I will give you so-so amount of money or so-so time. Or if I pass this my exam, I will dedicate my time to serve you. I will do your work. If you must give me this job, God, I will give my first salary to you. I will do this to you. You see, I have so many secrets I'll be using. Hence, you guys have been with me for all these years. Let me give you one of the secrets. Every time I want to do something, the first thing I do is to make a vow. I Not a vow. I sow a seed. I'm, I will take some money. I will look for one of the ministry. I'll give it to them. One day, I was, I was praying. I was really wanting to come to America. I can come as a visitor, but I didn't want to do it. I know if I come as a visitor, I'm going to have so many challenges. I don't want to be illegal alien. I don't want to come here and try to get married and do a little thing that is not going to work and I know I wouldn't be able to do it. I made I made a sweet seed offering. 300 pounds. I give it to one of these pastors. It was a very young pastor. And he was a struggling in his ministry. I see this guy actually love the Lord. He's working so hard, do Bible study, do everything. And I went to visit his church. And after after being there, I went to my bank and withdrew 300 pounds and gave him the money. I was I was in I was in England. I went to my bank account, I gave him 300 pounds. And uh, I told him, I'm giving you this money to your ministry as a thanksgiving offering for God to open the door for me to go to the United States. I want to get a permanent resident to be able to go to the U.S. I have not applied. I have not done nothing. Nothing, nothing at all. I gave this money. Well, why are you giving money to this pastor? What is he going to do? Why? Well, listen, brothers and sisters, you have, none of us has ever seen God. If you want God to bless you, the first thing you must learn to do is to love him with all of your heart. Like Samuel and Caleb. Like Hannah. I now made a vow. You say, God, if you will indeed answer my prayer, I will give child to you. This woman has been coming to the church year in and year out. Year in and year out. Her second the husband's second wife was having so many kids, but she was not having for whatever reason. And she was so upset and told the husband, I'm not going to eat. She was very sad. The husband said, come on, eat. Am I not better than 10 children? The woman didn't want to hear that. And she went to the house of God and she was praying. She was praying. She was crying. She was, she was actually crying in her heart to God. Say, God, why is my life like this? And a man of God saw her, which is the duty of true man of God. You have to rebuke people of sin, of iniquity. You have to make sure that people to God. 
Get away here, you wicked woman. Why are you drunk? You're not, you're not supposed to be drunk in the church. The woman said, oh, I'm so sorry, sir. Your servant is not drunk. My heart is bitter. And I'm putting my heart to God. This woman did not open her mouth. Look at it. That is the, the prayer you pray from your heart. You don't, have to, you don't have to open your mouth. You don't have to disturb the whole neighborhood for people to know you are praying. This woman was just crying to God in her heart. But she didn't open her mouth. He said, God, if you give me this child, I promise you this child will be yours all the days of his life. Eli said, what is your problem? <coughs> Eli said, what is your problem? He said, my heart is bitter. I want God to answer my prayer. God, the man of God said, go in peace. May the God of Israel, may the God of Israel answer your prayer. Verse 19. So the entire family got up the next morning and went to worship the Lord once more. Then they returned home to Ramah. When Hekana slept with Hannah, the same woman she'd been with for these years, the Lord remembered her plead. And in due time, she gave birth to a son, and she named him Samuel. For she said, I asked the Lord for him. The next year, Herkana and his family went on their annual trip to offer a sacrifice to the Lord and to keep his vow. But Hannah did not go. She told her husband, Wait until the boy is weaned. Then I will take him to the temple and leave him there. With the laws with the law permanently you know people make vow brothers and sisters i have been in this ministry for quite a while lots of people come to me they're looking for a job they're looking for a pregnancy they're looking for to buy a house they're looking for so many things oh pastor i just want god to answer my prayer if god answer my prayer if you want a car i'll buy it for you i say no no don't make any vow please don't any money you want, I'll give it to you. I say, no, don't do that. You know, no, Pastor, I promise you, anything you want, I'll do it for you. I always tell them, don't make any vow. Don't do it. Because I know this is for, I don't want to, I don't want to set them for failure. If you make a vow, you don't promise it, God will destroy the work of your hand. That's why, even when I was a pastor, I never supposed to, I told people, I say, you don't have to, you don't have to do something. Don't, don't make a vow you cannot fulfill. I'm not telling you to give your, your whole one year salary. I will never tell you that because you have to pay your bills. I'm not that about pastors. They will just give the whole of your, to go and borrow more money and bring it to the church. God will bless you. I don't believe in that. But do I tell people to, to, to honor God through their giving? Yes. I do it. And God is the rewarder of them who did lend his serving. So Hannah made this vow and she became pregnant and she gave back to Samuel. He said, I don't want to go to the pilgrimage in Jerusalem. Because if I go, if I take the child there, I will leave the child there. She win the child, meaning when the, when the baby stops breastfeeding. Verse 23, whatever you ask, whatever you think is best, I cannot agree. Stay here for now, and may the Lord help you. May the Lord help you keep your promise. That's what the, that is the husband's prayer. May the Lord help you to keep your promise. People make a lot of promise, but they never keep it. So, she stayed home and nursed the child until he was weaned. When the child was weaned, Hannah took him to the tabernacle in Shilom. They brought along a three-year-old bull for the sacrifice and a basket of flour and some wine. After the sacrifice, the, after, after sacrificing the bull, they brought the boy to Eli. Sir, do you remember me? You know, sometimes I say, Pastor, you may not remember. But you are the one who had to say, Pastor, do you remember me? I was the one you prayed for last year. I was the one you had to write resume. I was the one you had to do that. I was the one you prayed for. Do you remember me? I can't remember. But Anna asked, I'm very, I'm the very woman who stood here several years ago to the Lord. I asked the Lord to give me this boy and he has granted my request. Now, I'm giving him to the Lord, and we belong to the Lord, his whole life, as 
they worship the Lord there. And they worship the Lord there. You see, he made a vow. He fulfilled a vow. Have you made a vow to God? Are you actually, are you serving the Lord? This year, I told us, the beginning, I said, we must make vow to serve the Lord. I challenge everybody. I say, this year is going to be a wonderful year. But in order for God to bless you, you must make a vow to say, God, I'm going to read my Bible. I am going to pray. And I'm going to support the work of God. If you do it, you're going to be very surprised how much money you are going to get. You are going to get more salary increase. I am talking from personal experience that is working for me today. Today. If you serve the Lord, he's a rewarder of those who diligently serve him. I sent us a test message last year. I said, those who serve the Lord faithfully, they'll be rewarded. I told you to read Joshua chapter 14, the whole chapter. You see, when you serve the Lord faithfully, when you don't give bad report, the Lord will bless you. What happened? Her Canaan came with the wife Hannah to fulfill their promises to God, that vow. Do you have any vow as a student? Do you have a vow as a worker? Do you have a vow as a husband, as a wife, as a Christian, as a pastor, as an evangelist? Do you have a vow? I was listening to one pastor yesterday. And the pastor said, 1996, 1995, my ministry was struggling. It was struggling. Things were not moving. And I, I, I made a vow, 2000, 1997. I said, God, if you indeed bless my ministry, say, God said, you are not ready. You have to prepare yourself. You're not ready. Say, God, what? And God told him, go and do something. He did it. The ministry is exploded later on. Today, he said, that time was a training period. See, the vow I made, I said, Pastor, are you making a vow? Is your ministry struggling? Is your life struggling? Is your marriage struggling? Is your job struggling? Is your academy struggling? Are you making a vow to God? I am going to study my book this year, God. If I get all A's, I'm going to give you $100 or $50 or $10. If you help me indeed to get all A's. If you help me to do this, I will do this for you. Or I will serve you. It don't have to be money. So don't misunderstand. It don't have to be money. Chapter 2 of First Samuel. Chapter 2. Hannah. Prayers of praise. Then Hannah prayed. My heart rejoices in the lord the lord has made me strong now i have an answer for my enemies <laughs> i rejoice because you rescued me no one is holy like the lord there is no one beside you there is no rock like our god stop acting so proud and haughty don't speak with such arrogance for the lord is a god who knows what you have done he will judge your actions the, bo the bowels of the mighty is broken, and those who those who stumble are not strong. Those who we are those who are well fed are not starving, and those who we are starving are not full. The child women now have seven children, and the law and the woman with many children waste away. The law give both death and life. He brings some down to the grave, but he raises up. He raises other up. The Lord makes some poor and others rich. He brings some down and lifts others up. He lifts the poor from the dust and the needy from the garbage dump. He set them up among princes, placing them in seat of honor. For all the earth is the Lord, and he has set the world in order. He will protect his faithful ones on the line, but the wicked will disappear in darkness. No one will succeed by strength alone. Those who fight against the Lord will be shattered. He thunder against them from heaven. The Lord judges throughout the earth. He gives power 
to his king. He increases the strength of his anointed. Then he cannot return home to Ramah without Samuel. And the boy served the Lord by assisting Eli the priest. Underline that. The boy served the Lord by, by assisting Eli the priest. What are you doing to assist a pastor in your church? In your ministry? What are your children doing to assist the pastor? Do you just go there on Sunday? Oh, you want to want your you want your you want your friends to see you in the church? Do you assist the pastor? Do you assist the men of God? You can assist with your money, you can assist with your prayer, you can assist with your time, you can assist with encouragement. You know, today the church is not militant because we have bench warmers. People just come to the church or just listen to the word of God. As long as I can hear the word of God, that's fine. We're not doing nothing. But this boy was born in a miraculous child. And it's not going to grow up a miraculous child and to be a great man of God. Every child that has been born by the power of God usually end up to be a mighty child. Starting from me. You want God to bless you? You must give your life to God. You must serve Him wholeheartedly. And you must learn to praise God when He has done good for you. You cannot just say, Well, I don't want to tell I don't want to I don't want to tell any brothers what is happening to me. No, you must in the congregation of the children of God, you must give testimony. Oh brother, I want to thank God for the answer prayer. I want to thank God for what He has done for me. The devil will say, don't thank God. What are you thanking God for? If you get another new job, are you the first person to get a job? Don't let people even know you have a job. Or if you buy a car, don't let people know you have a car. If you have a house, don't let people know you have a house. If you, if you get promotion at your job, don't let people know. Just keep it to yourself. Don't thank God. In the congregation of the children of God, we must give praise to God. Why do we give praise and testimony to encourage others that if God can answer my prayer, He can answer your own too. Just a little question of time. So, Hannah gave praise to God and fulfilled her vow. He left the boy and with Sam with, with Eli. You know, sometimes the church may not be what it seems to be on the surface. There are a lot of people who may be wicked in the church. That is why I want us to study these chapters. Eli's children were priests. They were actually priests assisting their father in the ministry, which was very good. But the sad thing is that every pastor is not a man of God. Every priest is not a, a man of God. Every child of God in the church, they are not children of God. Verse 12 of chapter 2 of 1 Samuel. Now the sons of Eli were scorers who had no respect for the Lord. Underline, they were wicked. They have no respect for God. For their duties as priests, whenever someone offered a sacrifice, Eli's son would send over a servant with three fork with three prune fork while the meat of the sacrifice animal was still bo was still boiling the servant would stick the, the the fork into the pot and demand whatever it was brought up would be given for, to Eli and all the Israel who came to worship so the children of Israel when they come to make sacrifice what happened behold Eli's children we demand on due portion. You know, as a pastor, all the offering don't belong to the to the pastor. Today it's not like that. All the meat sacrifices don't belong to the the priest. There is a portion. They have there is a three fork spoon with a long. You hear they say, you say if you want to eat with the devil, use a long stick. That's where they, they get that free from. There is this a long fork. They dip into the deep pot when it's cooking. They just dip it, it has to be fork. And whatever the priest, whatever comes up, that belongs to the priest. Unfortunately, but you know what happened? Eli's children, whenever they come up, they pick a bone. They say, no, no, I don't want that. They throw it back. Verse 15. So the servant will even the servant will even come before the animal fat had been born on the altar. He would demand raw meat before it had been boiled so that it could be used for roasting. The man offering the sacrifice might reply, Take as much as you want, but the fat must be burned first. 
then the, pre, the servant will demand, no, give it to me now, or I will take it by force. So the sin of this young man was very serious in the Lord's sight, for they treated the Lord's offering with contempt, with disrespect. But Samuel, though he was a little, was a, was a, only a boy, served the Lord. He was, he, he wore a linen garment like that of a priest. Each year his mother would make a small coat for him and brought it to him when he came with her husband for the sacrifice. Before they returned home, Ella would bless her Kana and his wife and say, May the Lord give you other children to take the place of this one she gave to the Lord. And the Lord blessed Hannah. She conceived and gave birth to three sons and two daughters. Meanwhile, Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord. Now, Eli was very old, but he was aware of what his sons were doing to the people of Israel. He knew, for instance, that his sons were, reduced, were seducing the young women who were assisted at the entrance of the tabernacle. Eli said to them, I have... I have been hearing report from all the people about the wicked things you are doing. Why do you keep why do you keep sinning? You must stop, my sons. The report I, I hear among the lost people are not good. If someone sin against other person, God can meditate for the guilty party. But if someone sin against the law, who can intercede? But Eli's son will not listen to their father, for the law was already planning to put them to death. Wow! Meanwhile, the boy Samuel grew taller and grew in favor with God and with the people. You see, Eli's children, these are the sons of the priest. Jesus, what is going on here? Why do people give themselves to the devil to be used? A lot of pastors are giving themselves and their family to, to the devil to be used today. Number one, a lot of pastors are dipping her into church money. They're not supposed to be using. The money for church is for so many things. If you read the Bible, you tell her how to use the money. And some pastors are actually having sex with young girls in the church. They're having sexual relationship with young girls. And some young girls are making themselves available for this pastor to have sex with them. Because they want to have a nice clothes, they want to ride a big car, they want to travel with these pastors. And that's what Eli's children were doing. And the father heard what they were doing. The father did not remove them from priesthood. Don't say, my sons, you cannot serve in the church no more. Because you are not doing the right thing. In order for you to, to serve the Lord, you must serve him in holiness and in truth. But you know what happened? He said because God wants to kill Eli's children. God does not want to kill any of us. The life we live determines how we are going to live. If you live a holy life, God is going to bless you. God is no respect of persons. Oh, I don't care. You're not my God. Well, have you ever seen God? The God sees everything we do in the secret, in the open, when nobody is there. Do you like to tell lies? You like to steal? You like to cheat? You like to do evil things? Oh, nobody has seen me. That was what Eli's children were doing. And they think they were smart. He said, because God intended to kill them, put them to death. That's why God allowed them to be doing the evil they were doing. Verse 27, one day a man of God came to Eli and gave him this message from the Lord. Priest, this priest was the highest national priest. But you know what happened? There's another man who does not have a church. He wasn't a priest. God can talk to you if you make yourself available to God. One day, a man of God came to Eli and gave him this message from the Lord. I reveal myself to your ancestors. When they were Pharaoh's servants or slaves in Egypt, I chose your ancestor Aaron from among all the tribe of Israel to be my priest, to offer sacrifice on my altar, to burn incense, and to wear the priestly vest as he served me, and I assign the sacrifice offering to you, priest. So why do you scorn my sacrifice and offering? 
Why do you give your sons more honor than you give me? For you and they have become fat from the best offering of my people Israel. Therefore the Lord, the God of Israel, say, I promise that your branch of the tribe of Levi will always be my priest. I will honor those on the line who honor me. I will despise those who think lightly of me, who despise me. The time is coming when I will put an end to your family so it will no longer serve as my priest. All the members of your family will die before their time. No one will reach their old age. You will watch with envy as I pour out prosperity on the people as I pour out prosperity on the people of Israel. But no members of your family will ever live at their days. You know the days God assigned to us, Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, 120. The few not cut off from serving at my altar, the few not cut off from serving at my altar will survive but only their eyes can go blind and their heart break and their children will die a violent death to prove that i have to prove what i have said will come true i will cause your two sons honifa and Phinehas, to die on the same day then i will raise up a faithful priest who will serve me and do what i desire i will establish his family and they will be my priest to my anointed king forever. Then all of your surviving family will bow before him, begging for money and food. Please. They will say, give us jobs among the priests so we will have enough to eat. Brothers and sisters, I say all the time, what you study have no relevance with your, your blessing. What you study have no relevance with your blessing. I know a lot of daughters in this America who have no job. I know lawyers who have no job, who are driving taxi. The American trained lawyer and American trained daughters. They have no job. Why? Because they say, I don't believe in God. I don't like church. I don't like religion. The white man gives us religion. Which one is your own religion? Which one is your, your father gives to you? The white man gives us so many things. They give us a car. The white man makes us wear clothes. The white man gives us a computer. The white man give us living the house with all this beautiful thing. The white man give us air condition. Why don't you say, oh, I'm not going to use the air condition. I'm not going to live in the house. I'm not going to drive a car. I'm not going to wear a suit. I'm not going to do this. Because the white man give it to us. The devil want to deceive these people. They say, white man give it to us. I'm not going to listen to what they are saying. That's how they want to enslave us. If you serve God faithfully, brothers and sisters, this year, 2018, I don't care what you are doing. God will bless you. I don't care what you want to achieve. God will bless you. But if you now say, oh, I don't have time for God. You are doing whatever you are doing partially. Be careful. Be careful. Are you listening to me? Wherever you are listening to me, this voice, listen and listen very well. God is looking for faithful men and women who oh, will truly serve Are you a young man? Have you dedicated yourself to serve the Lord? Have you given your life to Jesus Christ? Have you confessed your sin? Have you repented from your fornication, from adultery, from smoking, from stealing, from cheating, from lying? Have you repented? Repent to because God is a God of justice and a God of judgment. The children of Eli, Eli were sinning. They thought nobody was seeing them. Oh, you can't tell me what to do. Their father was old. Their father couldn't control them. They were wild beasts. But you can be a wild beast. But you're not going to be a wild beast to God. Because God is bigger and stronger and mightier than you. Listen and listen to me very well. If you serve the Lord faithfully, God will bless you. I don't care what you study. Pay your tithe. Give your offering. Make time to read your Bible. Make time to pray. Even if the person you are giving into is stealing the money, don't worry. You are giving because of God. You don't have to love the person because of the person you are giving. God, I'm giving this money because of you. When I was a young man, brothers and sisters, sometimes life can be very challenging. As a young man, life was very challenging for me. 
But one thing I have determined from my childhood, because my mother told me how I was born, I was a miraculous child. I decided to serve the Lord. Because without God, I wouldn't have been born. I was not supposed to be alive. From that day, I know a great expectation was put on me. I decided to walk day and night to make sure I serve the Lord and achieve success in whatever I put my hand to do. When I was in primary school, I was called mathematician. I was so good with numbers that everybody were calling me mathematician. I write to I started reading my Bible as a young little boy. I will read my Bible and we read and we read the book. The, we don't have a, we don't, I didn't have the Old Testament. I just have the New Testament. I like to read Mark. I like to read John. They brought little kids to Jesus and disciple rebuke him and say, "Turn away." Jesus said, "Bring them." I said, "Young man." And I said, as I grew old now, I was able to buy my own Bible. I started reading and immediately I started walking. The first thing I did was to buy a Bible for every member of my family. So that people will not complain and say, I don't have the money to buy the Bible. I bought Bible for everybody. More than 100 Bible. It cost me a lot of money. That was my first investment. It got to a point that life is up and down. I had challenges again. And I said, God, if you will indeed bless me. And before I realized it, I was making about 10,000 Naira, Nigerian Naira. In a month, I didn't have a university degree. And I was paying so much tight that my pastor is not from the same town with me. He is from the eastern Nigeria, from Umuahia. The pastor called me and said, You are not supposed to give the whole of your tithe to church. I said, Pastor, I know. He said, Where do you work? Reverend Maisie, hopefully, he said, I may hear this message. He said, Where do you work? I told him, He came to my office. That is a true man of God. He wants to make sure I wasn't stealing money. He wants to make sure I was not a kidnapper. I was not a drug dealer. I was not an evil man. When he came to my office, he asked me, where do you work? I gave it to him. He came without telling me. When he came, they were saying, Pastor. They were, my co-worker would say, Pastor. They were preaching to everybody. They called me Pastor. And the pastor said, I'm his pastor. Came to my office. When he came to the church, he said, I went to this young man's office. He didn't mention my name. He said, I was very impressed because they were calling him pastor. He preached to everybody. From that day, the hand of God was upon my life. The Lord was blessing me tremendously. In 1982, I came to the United States as a student. And then before I realized it, I finished my first degree two and a half years. I did my MBA one year. I went back to Nigeria. I started working in a bank. Before I realized it, I left there and went to other private company. When I see sin, I don't feel comfortable with sin. Life was a little bit tough again. I chose the path of righteousness. And I decided to become a pastor because to me, everything was not right with the, with the secular world. Went to, I did Bible studies, I got my diploma, and I came to the U.S., and the uh, brothers and sisters, the hand of God has been upon my life since that time, and it has been a blessing. If you serve the Lord, if you serve the Lord, if you serve the Lord, the Lord will bless you. We are going to stop here today. Next week, by the grace of God, we are going to look at chapter 2 and chapter 4. We are going to see what happened to Funny Hair and Honey Fan. Pen Penny Hands and Funny Hand. Because of their sin, they were destroyed. And the ark of God was taking 40,000 Israelites died because of these two men's sin. May your family be saved. May he never be destroyed because of your sin. May your life not be destroyed because of your sin in the name of Jesus. May the Almighty God protect you. May he send his edge of protection upon you. He said, when you do my work, then I'm going to promote you. I'm going to bless you. Somewhere, the little boy now become the priest. What an irony. He was not from a, a priestly family. You want God to bless you? What you do have no relevance with your study. We are going to see later on how God spoke to Samuel when he was seven years old. The Lord spoke to him and said, Samuel, 
Eli's children have offended me. God sent a man of God to warn them. Today, the Bible is warning you. You read your Bible. You see sin. The Bible is telling you what you are supposed to I'm not going to do it. You are supposed to read your Bible. You are supposed to pray. You are supposed to obey God. You are supposed to honor your father and your mother. You are supposed to honor your elders. You are supposed to be faithful at your place of work. But you are not doing it. You are supposed to be a good student. Study your book so that you can be a master of the subject. You just want to flip through it, thinking that is the way to go. And you are supposed to read your Bible truly and truly read it like you are reading a textbook to understand the mind of God, the plan that God has for you. But you don't want to read it. You are looking for somebody to blame. You want to blame your father. You want to blame your mother. You want to blame your employer. You want to blame your teacher. You want to blame the American government. Or your mother, your father, the, the village you came from. Brothers and sisters, we must wake up. If you serve the Lord, he said, if you serve me indeed, I will bless your bread. That's your job. I will bless your water, which is your whole household. I will take away sickness and disease from you. I will make you to live your days, which is 120 years. And nothing will catch you. There will not be miscarriage. There will not be barrenness. That is the word of God. That what happened here. You cannot see. Samuel is blessed. But those who despise God. Those who think, I don't have time for God. I'm not going to serve God. Wow. They are destroyed. You cannot fight against God. I plead with you in the name of Jesus, brothers and sisters. Wherever you are hearing this message, give your life to Christ. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me my sin. If you don't have a Bible... Get one. You don't have to even go and buy. Go to online. Just go to your app store. If you have a smartphone, Android or iPhone, just download one of the modern Bible, any version you like, and start reading. Pray every day, morning and evening and afternoon. Read your Bible as if you are preparing for a test. And watch God. Watch God. Watch Him. Watch God. Watch God. Hey! I like that. Watch him. Display his power upon you. Watch him bless you beyond your wildest dream. May God help us in Jesus' name. Our God is an awesome God. He said, "Days that honor me, I will honor. Your maid may be lying at work, at school, in the office, in the market square. Don't join them. Do not join them. Don't join them. Eli children thought they were smart. God destroyed them. Hmm. Oh, brothers and sisters, as I read this, I said, Oh God, why? Why did these children do this? Why did they cause you so much pain? Why they don't be like why don't they be like Samway? Samway, why don't they just imitate this little boy? Why? 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 But Eli's children, they are gone. But this is for our own example. Serve the Lord faithfully, brothers and sisters. You cannot be saying, I'm too young to serve God. If you can talk, you can serve God. If you can read ABC, you can read your Bible. This is the challenge you have this year. This is January. I'm trying to lay the foundation so that we can have the blessing that God has for us. Joshua and Caleb brought a good report. And because they got a good report, the Lord blessed them. That's what God is looking for. Good report meaning you read the Bible, you claim the promises. If you are sick, quote the Bible, say, God, your word say if I serve you, sickness will not abide in my home. Sickness is a rebel. It's an evil person. You rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. Say the blood of Jesus is against you. You say, you Satan. You know what you know what you know what he's going to do? He will live. He said, Oh, this person knows they are right. Study your Bible and study your Bible and study your Bible. As if you are preparing for your nursing exam, your 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 GMAT to take your graduate admission to, to go and study your master's degree. Or try to do your, your necklace, your RN, or try to do your 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 your, your PSAT or your SAT or your art. There are so many exams. If you do it very well, study your Bible that way, you'll be good to go. May God help us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we're going to stop here today. 
we are going to stop we are going to st we are going to start in chapter three next week we are, we are going to continue we are not able to finish it we only have less than one hour but one hour may god help us in jesus name do we have any prayer requests do we have another prayer any other prayer request okay if there's no other prayer request we are going to pray our god to answer prayer we can see what happened to hannah she brought her prayer request to God, and God grant her a request. A woman that was called barren is now a mother of six children. That's what God can do. Our God is an awesome God. Whenever we come to Him in faith, whether it be unemployment, whether it be sickness, whether it be disease, whatever it is, God can do it. We're going to pray. Father, I want to bless you for the answer prayers. Your word says, Come to me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. You say in Christ, we are one family. There is no Gentile. There is no barbarian. There is no Jews. We are all children of God. Die and pay for by Christ. Christ died and paid for our sin and our redemption and our purchase. And so, Father, we bring our sisters, some before you who want to marry. We either speak to the parents of this girl and you let there be peace in this marriage. That we are all children of God. It doesn't matter whatever tribe, whatever language or whatever culture or whatever color of our skin we are all children of god and that should be the paramount father give them the grace as they come together as husband and wife to be one indeed in christ jesus in jesus name Amen. but i pray for our sister that he will give, give him the grace to be able to win more so for you she hunger she says she hunger test to know christ and to love christ the more father grant her her desire so that I can be a soul winner and not just hearer but a dwarf of the world in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for the church of Jesus Christ that is going on in Nigeria right now and worldwide. All that is persecuting the church of Jesus Christ, wherever the church of Jesus Christ is, all the men and women that want to conspire against to destroy the church of Jesus Christ in Nigeria because we belong to Christ, we use the name of the risen Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth, to destroy those power now in the name of Jesus. We say they will go into perpetual sleep so that the church of Jesus Christ can have peace worldwide and in Nigeria in particular in Jesus' name. Father, I want to bless you for your word we heard today. We want to thank you because you are the one that answered prayer. You answer Hannah's prayer and you saw that Joshua and Caleb served you in Joshua chapter 14, 6 to 14. And now they are 85 years old and you have blessed them. Father, Give us the grace to serve you so that we can live our days. We saw that Samuel, the little boy, served you. When the mother asked of this child, this child was born a miraculous child. He lived a miraculous life. And his life was a blessing to the kingdom of God all throughout the days of his life. Father, give us the grace to serve you. Give us the enablement. Give us the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, our Father and our God, any way we have sinned against you, as individual, as member of this fellowship, of this hour with the Lord. Father, we ask that you forgive us. Bless our brothers and sisters this year. As they hear your voice, in their place of work, promote them. On the street, grant them your favor. Grant them your favor, Lord God of Israel. And deliver them from, deliver everyone from accident. In the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Father, I thank you for adding more years to my life. I'm going to, my wife and I, I'm going to live in good health of body and mind in the name of jesus christ that our days shall be fulfilled we will not be our days shall not be cut off according to what you told ella and his children and his family our days shall be fulfilled either you give our children all the children that are presented here to the family that they will be children of god indeed they will serve you not like the Eli's children and be children of god children of god that serve god in spirit and in truth in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Father, any, any one of us that is sick in our body, your word says healing is the children's bread. Mm -hmm. We claim that healing for every one of our brothers and sisters. Would that be our children, our husbands, our wife, in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Whether it's financial sickness, economic sickness, social sickness, we rebuke you today in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Our Father and our God, we come to love you. We come to worship you. We come to serve you. Answer our prayer. And let your name be glorified in our lives. In Jesus' name. May the Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May we find favor with God and with man. Also, I will come in contact with in Jesus' name. 
brothers and sisters, God bless you and we appreciate you. Thank you. Sorry, we're a little bit late today in, uh, in, in finishing, but next week we're going to continue. Yes. Thank you, my Lord. Yeah, God bless you, brother. Yes. Thank you, my Lord. For you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. God bless you all in Jesus' name. We'll see you next week, same time, same place. Amen.